is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2024 toyota land cruiser courtesy of younger toyota in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so yes the land cruiser is back from the dead that is a wonderful thing for sure. It shares a platform with the Lexus GX in case you were curious about that. And this thing does come with plenty of off-road capability as well, including of course a four-wheel drive system. It's got low range gearing, it's got locking differentials, and it's got a crawl control system actually as well if you wanted to take this thing on the beach maybe. But anyways, ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go to jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing so there will be a few different configurations for the 2024 land cruiser you got the 1958 edition which is the one we are in today starting at fifty five thousand nine hundred fifty dollars you have the mid-range land cruiser starting at sixty one thousand nine fifty then you got the first edition starting at seventy four thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars but regardless of the configuration that you go with the power plant on this thing is going to be the same powering the beast is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder hybrid with two electric motors and yes this is the same power plant as the new 2024 Tacoma in case you were curious about that 326 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 465 pound-feet of torque coming in at 1700 rpm power being sent to all four wheels through Toyota's full-time four-wheel drive system gotta love that power sent to the ground through an eight-speed automatic zero to 60 times should come in at approximately 6.6 .6 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 22 in the city 25 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the lane cruiser i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes because there are plenty of them both on and off-road drive mode so let me touch on the on-road first there's a circular dial located just in front of the shifter if you turn that to the left and to the right you got eco normal and sport and then the off-road drive modes are going to consist of auto dirt snow mud rock and deep snow so quite a bit of adjustments there so now that we got all of that out of the way for now since we're on road let's go ahead and uh let me put it in sport driving mode let's find a straightaway and let's see how quickly we can get our new land cruiser here up to speed all right found our straightaway here in three two one go it's okay all right, that'll get the job. Yeah, bleh, that'll get the job done. Not the quickest thing in the world. Um, kind of expected a little bit more than that, but this is a beast of an SUV, so it, it'll certainly get the job done. There was a little bit of lag at the beginning as well, which is kind of surprising because it's got dual electric motors. I wasn't expecting that, but it's all good. I mean, you're not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway, which is kind of surprising. That's all. But anywho, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 17-inch ventilated front discs. Those are some massive front discs. In the back, 17-inch solid rear discs. So same size back there. As far as how uh, braking feel goes, I love it. It's on the firm side of things. You guys know I love firm braking feel. So definitely brings you to a nice stop in the Land Cruiser. So 100% not gonna have any issues there, but the bread and butter of the Land Cruiser, you guys know, is gotta be the suspension. So let me touch on the suspension a little bit. Up front, you're gonna get an independent double wishbone type front suspension. In the back, four link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. And like I said, it's got crawl control for the beach. At least that's what I've used it for before. If you go to Aztec Island in Maryland, I've gone into Rubicon on the beach there, but the Land Cruiser should definitely do perfectly fine on that beach as well. It's also got downhill assist control. It's got center and rear locking differentials. And yes, that comes standard on every single trim level across the port so you gotta love that so that can actually split the power 50 50 for improved traction and reduced wheel spin of course it's got an available front stabilizer bar disconnect system that's pretty cool as well that increases the suspension flex but overall as far as ride quality goes it's actually been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today so i 100 don't have any issues i will say the roads in hagerstown are pretty darn nice but still no issues for me as far as cabin noise goes i'm going 56 miles per hour right now so i'll let you guys be the test maybe a little bit of wind noise but other than that it's perfectly fine i don't have any issues there as far as steering feel goes it's actually really really good 
I like it. So it's a lot heavier than I thought it was gonna be. Traditionally in SUVs, you find a loosey-goosey steering feel and it's unemotional, but so it's got a nice little weight to it. So I really like the steering feel in the Land Cruiser. Then touching on visibility, there's no possible way you should have any issues with rear visibility in this thing just because of the shape of it. It's like the boxiest SUV in history. So definitely no issues with rear visibility. Rain sensing windshield wipers touching on forward visibility does also come standard. So whenever the Land Cruiser detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers. So just one less thing you gotta worry about there, kind of like automatic headlights and also on forward visibility, there is a head up display that comes on the first edition trim level only. So, and that's gonna project your speed, speed limit and safety features up onto your windshield um, that are helping keeping your eyes on the road so you can better enjoy your drive in the Land Cruiser. So that's always nice too, but, that pretty much rounds off the performance segment of this review, guys. Let me take this thing off-road a little bit and let's check out the exterior of our brand new 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser finished in ice cap. In case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had on this one. But let's go ahead and start with my favorite part. Let's go ahead and check out where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter J, indicating that the Land Cruiser is built and assembled in Japan, uh, specifically Tokyo, in case you were curious. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Toyota Heritage front grille does come standard across the board. You might recognize that if you've seen the Land Cruisers before. To the sides, LED headlights do come standard for all trim levels. However, they will differ in design dependent upon the trim level that you go with. So we have the Heritage inspired circular lights. That's gonna come on the 1958 that we have today and the first edition trim level. However, if you were to go at that mid-grade Land Cruiser, you're actually gonna get kind of the last generation's rectangular style light. So I like that look too. I think both of them actually look good. So I would be fine with either one, honestly. LED daytime running lights do come standard. You get the automatic feature. You also get automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So gotta love that. LED fog lights do come standard on all trim levels across the board. I don't know why I didn't turn them on for this part of the video, but they are down there. You guys could see those. Also, front skid plates actually do come standard on all trim levels across the board down there as well. So, uh, by the way, eight inches of ground clearance in case anybody was curious about that. And you actually do get upgraded skid plates if you were to go with that first edition trim level. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Land Cruiser. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one. Roof rails do come standard on the mid-grade. Rock rails do come standard then on the first edition, and we actually have that as an option on our 1958, in case you were curious. But rear privacy glass, of course, does come standard as well. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they will be finished in a gloss or matte black, depending upon the configuration that you go with. They are power adjustable. They are heated then as well. Uh, as far as the running boards go, of course, there's plenty of different options there, but illuminated running boards are optional on the mid-grade and there are other options available like our 1958. Uh, they don't come standard on the 1958, but again, they're optional if you wanted them. Uh, taking a look at the wheel setup. These are pretty darn good looking wheels if you ask me. So you get 18 inch dark gray metallic alloys for the 1958 that we have today. I love the design. I think they look amazing on the Land Cruiser. Also then 18 inch matte gray alloys for the mid grade and then 18 inch matte black alloys for the first edition. So a little bit different of a design depended upon the configuration that you go with. But what's also kind of interesting that kind of stood out to me was a lot of times I'll say floating roof line on the C pillar. You guys can see that black line that separates the roof from the rest of the body. But you also got a floating roof line on the A pillar as well. And that's something that you don't ever see. So it's kind of making it look like the roof is just floating uh, as far as the design la language goes. So I think that's the first time I've ever seen it in the front. Usually they'll do a gloss black A pillar. Toyota's done that plenty of times, but I've never seen just the floating line in the A pillar. So kind of interesting. Anyway, started pointing out that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, there actually is a gloss black shark fin antenna. It's kind of hiding underneath of that uh, rock rack up top there but rear spoiler with an integrated brake light rear spoiler is going to be finished in gloss black got the rear window wiper back there as well you got the toyota and land cruiser badging um, one of the cool things about the back end in typical toyota fashion i'll show this to you guys you guys see this button right here i'm going to go ahead and press it that actually opens up the uh, rear glass there's a handle right here i don't know why i didn't grab that first 
But that's pretty cool. So if you back this thing up on the beach, because it is very capable on the beach, you can just simply chill in the cargo area, maybe eat a sandwich or something and check out the ocean. So yeah, that's awesome. So anyhow, wanted to show that to you guys. But then just below it all, of course, you will find a single exhaust outlet. It is tucked away. And having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around to the back of the Land Cruiser, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a manual tailgate if you were to go with the 1958 like we have today. However, for the mid-grade in the first edition, that is going to be a power tailgate in case you wanted that. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 37.5 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed that. 120 volt power outlet though does come standard for all trim levels across the board, so that's pretty darn cool. LED cargo lining back there as opposed to the halogen balls also liked that there's some chrome plated tie down anchors back there as well and a little bit of in floor storage just a little bit if you were to lift up on that back portion uh underneath of that cargo floor there but the spare tire is actually located down below you guys probably saw it with the uh exhaust b-roll shot that i showed you guys there but anywho that's there as well but then making our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 26.7 inches which on paper is not the best so for reference i'll give this a shot here i'm an even six feet tall actually wasn't too bad for me um it seemed perfectly fine so i don't have any issues there even though that number is uh not the best but also for those rear passengers they do have a rear center armrest with cup holders there's a 12 volt power outlet two usb charging ports and by the way tri-zone climate control does come standard on the land cruiser so both driver passenger and the rear passengers can set their own individual temperatures so that's pretty darn cool and by the way the ventilation is found on the roof or ceiling however you want to put it up the land cruiser as opposed to just in front of those rear seats where it traditionally is found in most suvs so wanted to mention that as well but then make our way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seats for the 1958 i actually do like the feeling of these cloth seats so every cloth seat is different these are pretty darn cool though heated front seats for all trim levels across the board i like that soft text upholstery for that mid-grade trim leather seating for the first edition you will find a power driver seat with power lumbar for the mid-grade and first edition and then ventilated front seats for the mid-grade and first edition as well having said that you don't always need power adjustable seats to find your perfect driving position i actually was perfectly fine with these seats so i found them plenty comfortable and traditionally toyota and lexus do an incredible job with their seat comfort and uh, yeah, I did, definitely didn't have any issues, but let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel here because it's a pretty cool design. Tilt and telescoping, it is leather wrapped. Uh, it's power adjustable for the mid-grade and first edition. And you got that heritage Toyota lettering found spelled out horizontally just in the front of the steering wheel there too. So pretty cool, but let's go ahead and make our way to the startup here. Let me start by showing you guys the key. All of your buttons are located on one side of the key. Got your Toyota logo, lock and unlock, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start for all trim. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot of the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so when it comes to the gauge cluster, it is gonna differ depending upon the trim that you go with. So you're gonna find a seven inch digital screen for our 1958 trim that we have with us here, but then there's gonna be a 12.3 inch full digital gauge cluster for the mid level and the first edition trim level. So, and by the way, when you change the drive mode, it is gonna adjust the colors ever so slightly up there. For example, if I were to put it in sport, you're gonna get some red hues. Eco is gonna give you green and normal is gonna give you blue and kind of match up better with everything else. But of course there are steering wheel mount controls found on the left side of the steering wheel. You can display different things up there since it is a digital screen after all. There's trip A, trip B, there's outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. So pretty much everything you could possibly want in a digital gauge cluster but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality here if you want to power moonroof go with the first edition because that's the trim that's going to give it to you led interior lighting does come standard and the crazy thing about the led interior lighting is there's literally no button for it you just tap the light and it's going to turn on and off so that's kind of weird it's kind of cool 
I like it. Got a leather wrap shift boot here. That's pretty cool as well. Wireless phone charger is gonna come on the first edition trim level only. You get an auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls for up to three different garage doors that come standard for all trim levels across the board. Like I said, tri-zone climate control as well. I like the Land Cruiser lettering spelled out just above the passenger side glove box. That looks pretty cool. In lieu of a wireless phone charger, just in front of the shifter, you actually have a little bit of just matte black storage. It's not even rubberized, but uh, it's probably where you're going to put yourself in more than likely. Just behind that, you got dual cup holders, and within the center armrest, there's a ton of space in there. But overall, I was kind of surprised. Everything is definitely on the basic side of things. So it kind of feels like a Corolla interior, if I'm being honest, with these matte black door handles and a uh, bunch of hard touch plastics on the doors. But I guess. Maybe that's what people are expecting for more of an off-roader SUV like the Land Cruiser, but I'm just a little bit surprised that there isn't more maybe gloss black finishes or texturized finishes or even like a plastic silver kind of uh, geometric design or something different, just not matte black and gray plastic, that's all. So. I don't know, that's just my thoughts. But so now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. You're gonna find an eight inch color touchscreen display from the 1958, 12.3 inch color touchscreen display to go with the mid-level and the first edition trim levels. But Bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard either way. You get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You could check out your driving statistics up there if you wanted to, of course, along with your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there's a different sound system for each trim level, believe it or not. So for the 1958, we're gonna get six speakers. For the mid-grade, you're going to get 10 speakers, and for the first edition, you're going to get a 14-speaker JBL sound system. So, having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing today, and let's test out our six-speaker sound system that we have with us here today. All right. I know I said six speakers, but it's probably the best six speaker sound system I've ever heard. That was really good. And by the way, this knob, I could tell you, was right off the Toyota Corolla. That volume knob, I should say. But yeah, plenty of bass, like surprising amount of bass, plenty of clarity as well. So to be honest, for me, I don't mind that six speaker sound system. That was actually really good. But Anywho, surprising. Last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Land Cruiser in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Not the highest quality rear view camera out there, but it does get the job done nonetheless, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side side curtain airbags do come standard. You get driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, which gives you a good bit. Gives you pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, dynamic radar cruise control, lane departure alert with steering assist, lane tracing assist, road sign assist, proactive driving assist, front and rear parking sensors, and a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. That's a ton of standard safety there. So anyways, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Land Cruiser, a um, little bit smaller in size than the previous generation, which if you're off-roading, that is actually a good thing. If you're looking for an off-road vehicle, it is a good thing that it is smaller. So that's kind of cool. More affordable than the previous generation as well. That was the first thing that came to mind when I saw this one originally when it was released is uh, the fact that it's substantially less expensive than the previous generation as well. So that was my two positives and now my two uh, room for improvements, I guess you could call them. Uh, the black accents on the exterior, I would love to see them body colored. That's just my personal preference, kind of like the previous generation did. Rather than the gloss black side skirts and fender surrounds, I would think that would look really good if they were body colored. That's just my preference. And then the other thing I could tell you guys is as far as interior quality goes, at least in our 1958 trim that we have with us here today, very, very much so on the basic side. A lot of black plastic, a lot of hard touch material, a lot of Corolla parts found in this 50 some thousand dollar Land Cruiser or $60,000 Land Cruiser. So I did want to mention that, but that's all I got. Let me know what you guys think of the new Land Cruiser in the comment section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that's what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.